Many of you have heard the story of the three wise men, but I want to read it in its totality so that you could hear what the Bible actually says and compare that against all the plays and all the dramatizations and everything you've seen. And then you'll realize that a lot of what you think you know about the three wise men is actually fiction and not, in the, not what's in the Bible. So let's look and see what's actually in the Bible. Is that all right? Okay. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and, um, and all Jerusalem with him and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea and so it is written by the prophet. How many of you know that God never does anything without first revealing it to his prophets? How many of you believe that there are still people with prophetic gifting today? How many of you believe you don't have to go to a psychic because God's still speaking to his people through the Holy Spirit? Okay, and so I want to invite you next week is going to be Sabbath Sunday. Sabbath Sunday is a Sunday that we take off once a year and we don't serve at our local campuses. We don't serve coffee. We don't serve in production. Um, you know, we don't serve as greeters, even though how many of you are grateful for our entire dream team? Can we put our hands together for our dream team? But we, we just take a Sunday off. So I will tell you, if you come to any one of our physical campuses, you will be all by yourself. Uh, matter of fact, you'll be locked out. So you're going to have to prayer walk around the building the entire time because I won't be there and no, none of our lead, no one will be there. And the reason why we take uh, a Sabbath Sunday, the Lord gave me this vision from the very first inception of our church. And as we focus on the new year, we have spent this previous year raising up prophets. And we believe in activating uh, the believers and the gifts of the Spirit at this church. And so we believe that prophecy is not a faucet that you turn on and off whenever you want. And there's a lot of churches that have said, well, we'll just stop prophesying because we don't like it. It's messy. And they try to turn it off like a faucet. We believe that prophecy is a river and you can't stop a river. It'll just redirect around any obstacle. Have you ever seen a winding river? And so we believe that we have to steward the river. We believe that we have to actually teach people how, you know, a river can be a destructive force, but it also can be a source of life-giving water and refreshment. And it can, you know what I'm saying? And so prophecy done the wrong way can be very destructive, but that doesn't mean we stop prophesying. It means we do it the right way. Amen. And so what we do every year is we raise up hundreds and hundreds of prophets all around the world and we train them and we're going to be talking in 2024 about actually debuting a school of the prophets, which I'm very excited about. I know, man, somebody over here is excited. Um, but I was able to get together some, prof, some, some prophets that uh, really have been faithful to our house, that have fruit that remains, John chapter 15. And we sat together and we're going to be broadcasting what we believe the Lord is showing for 2024. And I want to tell you, we pulled the lid off this year. We're talking politics, uh, geopolitical relationships. We're talking um, economics. We're talking all the way down to your personal life. And so what I want you to do next Sunday is I want you to invite your friends and family members to your house. And I want you to get together. You guys can have bagels. You can make pancakes, um, you, whatever, you know, a breakfast, whatever you want to do. But invite people to your house and tune in for the prophetic service that we're having this Sunday for Sabbath Sunday. Are you all going to do that? How many of you are making a commitment for that? The crazier thing is, last year, we debuted a lot of prophetic people we gave them the opportunity to speak and we called it a prophetic presbytery. And we traced their, their prophetic words over the course of the year. And we're actually going to be showing you on video next Sunday how every single one of their words came to pass. And we're going to prove it to you. And so if you have friends that doubt the supernatural or the things of God, tell them, go ahead and tune in this Sunday. It's going to be good. Aren't you excited to see what God is going to say to y'all? Um, it's, oh, okay. That's all I'll say about that. And so 
You see in the second chapter of Matthew, they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, so it's written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what the star, the, the time that the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search dil diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until they came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Somebody say amen. amen. So as we look at the second chapter of the book of Matthew, we have three wise men from the east. Somebody say from the east. It matters that they were from the east. They were not Jews. They were Gentiles. What that means is that God always had a plan to draw people who were the least likely. They were from the East. You know, listen, some of y'all come from families where everybody was saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, but you were the black sheep. You were the one drinking. You were the one smoking. You were, you were the one from the East. <laughs> Can I get an amen? You know, y'all know what I'm talking about? There's something about being from the East. Some of you, the fact that you're the one out of your family that goes to church every Sunday, is the biggest proof that God exists from the East. So these three wise men coming from the East is significant because they are not Jews, they are Gentiles, but they observe something in the sky. They saw a star and that star was a sign. And so number one tonight, it's very important that you understand that in order to be wise, you must stop. Everybody say stop. Life is moving by fast. They say life is short. One day you have hair and the next day you don't. <laughs> One day it's brown, the next day it's white. One day your back doesn't hurt, the next day it does. You've got to stop. Life is moving by. And sometimes we have to make the decision, are we going to look at the light shining through our screen or the sign that's shining through the sky? Because God was showing something in the cosmos. He was revealing something in the sky and they had to stop and they had to observe it. But then there's another level. You don't just stop and observe. The next level is that you must understand that which you are observing. And so there's some of you that this year, some things have happened in your life that have caused you to stop and you've had to reevaluate. Maybe this year was the year that you got divorced. Maybe this year is the year that you got fired or lost your job. Maybe this year is the year that you got a diagnosis from the doctor. Come on, can we keep it real today? There are things, maybe your favorite preacher went down and you found some things out about them that made you realize that they were preaching a message on stage, that they weren't living off stage. There's things that happen that cause us to stop. And God will try to divinely get our attention. But then when he gets our attention, what makes us wise is that we understand what he's trying to show us. When I think about this year, I did not know that this year we were going to have a movie. I'll never forget the conversation when our executive pastor, Josh Hamster, called me and he said, hey, the guy that's over the movie industry watches your sermons every week. And, uh, and I thought that would be cool for you to know. And I said, well, call, figure out how to call him and make a meeting and tell him we have a movie idea. And he was like, do we? And I said, I will by the time we get into the meeting. And then I went to Evan and I said, Evan, I know you've been editing my social media for the last several years. You think you can edit a movie? <laughs> He's like, I don't feel like you're giving me an option. <laughs> but when I think about what God did this year, God was trying to awaken his people. God was trying to get our attention 
See, when, when you have over a thousand movie theaters in America, two times that are filled, God's l- quite literally screaming in your ear, I am coming back soon, prepare. I mean, when, when I, I, to be honest with you guys, I knew that Times Square was gonna be powerful, but I'll never forget being in Gracie Mansion, getting invited to the mayor's mansion and coming in there and they're playing no longer slaves on the sound system that they got set up in the mayor's backyard and, and they're playing my video that had went viral two days before on their phone saying, we can't say this, the things you said in this video, but we, we're glad you said it. That wasn't in my plan, but God had a plan. And then when we were given permission to go to Times Square to hold an event and filled all of Times Square up, it was a sign unto people. Do you discern and understand that I am coming back? Prepare. Y'all, I'm, I'm unapologetically a supernatural preacher. You know, listen, some of you went to church and you had the coloring book version of Christianity. Can I just tell you that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? He has not changed. The same God that split the Red Sea for Moses will split a Red Sea in your life. The same God that delivered Daniel out of the lion's den will deliver you out of a fiery trial. The same God that caused that giant to fall will slay a giant in your life. He is the same. He never changes. And when Jesus Jesus promised that he was coming back. He was saying, baby, you can bank on it. Just as sure as I showed up as a baby, I will come back riding on a horse in the clouds. You will see me and I will return for my bride. And so when all of Times Square filled up, it was a sign. God was saying, I know you see it. It's going viral on the internet, millions of views. But do you understand what you're seeing? Because things happened through V1 Church this year that everybody saw. The sinner saw it, the celebrity saw it, the politician saw it. Y'all, everybody saw what our house did this year. But what determines whether or not you're wise is do you understand what you're seeing in the sky? Oh, I feel the anointing. And so they were three wise men. So that means that there were many men in the East that that stopped. There's many men in the East that observed, but there are only three that understood what they observed. And then they, and maybe there were more that understood what they observed, but there were only three that did the next step. They decided to take a journey. And what makes you wise, according to the Bible, is not necessarily just what you see. It's not because even the devil can see what God's doing. Oh, y'all, I'm preaching to somebody. It's not just what you observe. It's not just what you understand, but it's what you obey. You've got to walk this thing out. You've got to walk this thing out. And so they take this journey from the east, and then all of a sudden, as they take this journey, see, these, men, these wise men, we don't know much about them. Matter of fact, we're not given their names. But what we do know is that they have enough status in society that it begins to disrupt the political scene. And the question begins to be asked, why are these men migrating to Beth? Why are they headed to Bethlehem? What's happening in Beth? What is happening in that direction to the point where Herod begins to pay attention? And, and see, here's the thing. When you begin to take the journey that God has desired you to take, it will disrupt political systems. It will disrupt governmental systems. It will disrupt, come on, V1 youth. It will disrupt the educational system because your teachers and the administrators at the school will say, what is happening among Gen Z? And I'll say, they are taking a journey to Bethlehem. They are coming to see the Savior Messiah born in a major for themselves. They've seen something on TikTok and they've observed that it's time to cancel a spirit of suicide in their generation. I've seen something in the move. See, there's a movement that's going to happen, but the movement is always a result of understanding what you're seeing. And so right now I'm preaching, there's two kinds of people at every single location. The kinds of people that just hear a preacher run in his mouth who can't wait to go home and those who have scales falling off of their eyes right now. Not because I'm a good preacher, but because the Holy Spirit is a good God. 
who begins to reveal to you, this is the truth, for many are called, but few are chosen. That God knew you before you were in your mother's womb. That he destined every footstep that you would take, and he wants you to go on a journey towards Jesus. And the reason why you never got satisfied when you were drunk or high and kept having to chase a higher high and kept having to get drunker, the reason why you keep hooking up with people and you have to hook up with someone else and it seems to satisfy less every single time you do it is because Jesus is beckoning you to go on a journey and he's saying once you drink oh come on I, you will never thirst again once you partake deliverance is the children's bread I am the bread of life he declares and he's calling you not to join a church not to join a religion but to actually join a family where you have a heavenly father who said I have bought you with my blood let me wash you and let me ransom you to myself. See, the wise men were wise because they moved on what they saw. Then when they showed up, they got down and they began to worship because they were acknowledging he is who he said he is. And you know what I love about this part of the story? And, I, and this is for all of you Maverick City music lovers, all of you Hillsong worship lovers, Elevation, I don't know who, you know, uh, Circuit Riders, Black Voices Movement, you know, we got some Jonathan Stamper fans in the house, and, you know, we love worship. We, we're a church that loves to worship, but what I think makes the wise men so wise is that they worship Jesus before he had done anything for them. Some of you have a bitter root in your heart right now because you're saying, well, preacher, why would I come to Jesus? My life has been, all hell has broken loose against me. Preacher, why would I ever come to Jesus? Well, you know what makes you wise? Worship him before he changes things. Worship him before he comes through. If you want to prove you're wise, worship him before the miracle. Worship him before the breakthrough. Worship him. He's already been good. 2,000 years ago, he already died for you. He already secured your salvation. He already did it all. If he never did another thing, you'd have a reason to worship him. Come on, somebody. My favorite sermon is not Easter. It's Christmas. I'm going to close on this. The Lord told me, he said, they weren't just wise, they were wild. They weren't just wise. Now, let me give you a formula if you're wild, but you're not wise, you're a fool. But if you're wise, but you're not wild, you're a coward. And so what the Lord, yeah, come on. So what the Lord is trying to do is I don't want to know who's wise. I want to know who's wise and wild. I want to know who's wild and wise. Because see, it's going to require of you taking all that wild for the world and cashing it in for wild in the kingdom. It's going to, it's going to cause you to say, I was bold for sin and now I'm, I'm going to be bold for my savior. I was bold. Come on. I, there's something about being wise and wild. And I want to highlight some wild and wise people. There was a preacher and uh, his name was Pastor Massey and he was wise, but he was also wild. And when a single mother with two black eyes, a broken rib, and a broken toe called him and said, um, I've walked away from Jesus, but I saw in the newspaper that you were looking for a worship leader. And, and I know how to play the piano and lead worship. I, I just have walked away from Jesus. My husband's beat me and he's left. And Brother Massey, he said, honey, I'm going to grab my, wa my wife and I'm coming over to your house right now. See, he wasn't just wise, he was wild. He made a house call to a woman he had only met over the phone. That woman's name was Sandra, that was my mother. I'll never forget being five years old and sitting on the couch next to my mother, watching tears stream down both of her blackened eyes as the Holy Ghost was entering my home and he was saving my mom and bringing her back. And true to his words, 
She, was, she ended up playing that piano and worshiping, and that started something in my family that was irrevocable. A godly root went down on the deep, deep on the inside, and it started something irrevocable. And see, there was nation changers that were going to come out of my mother's womb. There was destiny in my mother's womb, but it took Brother Massey. You see, we called everybody brother and sister back in the day. Y'all don't know about that. You're too busy gossiping about each other. Back in the day, we were family in church, you know, uh, Brother Massey. But it took Brother Massey being wild enough to make a house visit. And, and if he was like these celebrity, untouchable pastors that you never could hear back from, my mom may not have ever been led back to Christ. But I'm thankful that he was willing to make a house visit. I'm thankful that V1 church members are willing to go visit people's houses. And, oh, you may not come to us, but we're coming to you. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that when we sing spirit break out, we mean break all the way out. Break out of every venue, every barrier. We'll go to the hospital and resurrect you from the dead. And if not, we'll preach your funeral and lead all your family to Christ there too. We are reckless, abandoned, no turning back V1 church. (laughs) Wild and wise. I'm thankful for Evan Wilson, who as a teenager had an executive pastor that had shared a vision that he was going to go to New York City to plant a church. Evan had only known Northwest Indiana, Chesterton, Indiana, had only ever slept in his mom's house with the exception of spending the night with a few friends over the course of his lifetime. Evan Wilson had never been on an airplane. The first time he'd ever been on a plane is when I asked him to go all the way to Ukraine. He spent 17 hours on a plane. He didn't die, praise God. (laughs) But as a teenager, I think about the spiritual accuracy that he had to operate in in order to hear the word of the Lord, to begin to say, I want to move to New York City to launch a church. Evan lives in missionary housing in New York City. He uh, has a pet mouse. We nicknamed him Ricky because Mickey lives in Orlando, but Ricky lives in Brooklyn. (laughs) Ricky Mouse. (laughs) <laughs> the mice he couldn't kill, he trained them. He had a whole little army, our first dream team. <laughs> but I'll tell you, Evan Wilson, I'll never forget him carrying our church's equipment upstairs to my apartment because we had no offices. It was three in the morning. I looked over at Evan's hand. There was blood coming out of his hands. And I, I begin to weep because I said, Evan's not just wise, he's wild. It's been 10 years later, and Evan's still bleeding for the vision. He's still dreaming with me. And when he walked that red carpet with me, he walked it as a producer, but in the spirit, he walked it as a prophet. See, it takes not just being wise, it it takes being wild. And, and, And see, wild people will go on a long journey from the east. In this auditorium, we got Carlos and Letty. I mean, probably some of their friends think they're crazy. Well, you're only crazy until you do three and a half hours worth of baptisms and over 70 people get baptized because one couple said yes to a vision to simulcast a service in their home. They're not just wise, they're wild and they're wise. They're wild and they're wise. I I think about a woman named Rebecca who had come to New York City because the Lord told her he was gonna use her there. And uh, Rebecca is staying in this missionary housing now that she didn't know that Evan Wilson used to stay in. (laughs) And then we're doing services in the evening in Bushwick, Brooklyn, in one of the worst neighborhoods. Matter of fact, one of the worst blocks in the worst neighborhood. And we wish they had mice, but they have rats. (laughs) And uh, she gets locked out of the missionary housing and hears that there's a service happening down below. Earlier that day, In my phone, the Lord had spoke to me the phrase circuit rider. I thought that he was giving me some kind of prophetic vision that we were going to release evangelists in the U.S. or something. So I typed it in my phone, circuit rider, circuit rider. All of a sudden, I'm meeting this woman, Rebecca, in the lobby. And she's like, yeah, I sort of got locked out of this missionary housing thing. And I'm here serving the city. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. What are you doing here? She's like, I'm a circuit rider. I said, all right, well, Lord, I didn't understand what you were showing me, but I did stop and I observed it. But now I want to understand. 
months later, I was in Kansas City in a stadium event, and I'm looking down at the field, and I see hundreds of people taking videos and pictures and running this event, and I say, there's Rebecca, there's that woman that I saw. And I offered her a job in the middle of the day. She said, I'll pray about it. I was like, what's there to pray about? <laughs> and now over the last year or so, have watched her raise up our creative gut, and she has been the visionary behind how many times we've gone viral on social media, showing the world our children receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, leading in creative, and, and, and telling stories from our house like a scribe. You know, some, some people say, oh, she's over social media. Oh, no, she's a scribe. <laughs> she's a prophetic voice in, in our generation. I can go on and on. Matter of fact, like if you guys want to stay for another four hours, I'll keep going. <laughs> but the reason why is because there's something about people who decide I don't just want to be wise and I don't want to just be wild. I want to be wild and I want to be wise. And if you were to ask me what it takes to be a true believer, it demands of us that we are both wild and wise. And that's my call right now. So as we look ahead to 2024, I'm gonna take a risk right now and say something. I've been having this dream on repeat that there's this massive tsunami that hits Manhattan and, that, and the waves of that tsunami just rush into Queens where I live and I can see it in the dream. I don't know what 2024 holds, but as I read about Herod, all I know is that Herod was attempting to sabotage the Savior Messiah. And the three wise men were wise because they were given a prophetic dream by God. And instead of going back to Herod, they went another way. I believe that in 2024, we are gonna face the spirit of Herod in the earth. I believe that we are going to see a persecution come to true believers. But God is gonna give dreams to those who dream. And he's gonna give instructions about which route to take. And if you've come to service today confused, if you've come to service today and you're saying like, I don't know which direction to take, I, this is a call. Who wants to dream dreams with me? Who wants to allow the Lord to speak to them? Because he will show us which way to go. And I believe that we will be standing ready and prepared. And last, and let me just say this, 2023, for as amazing as it was, was dress rehearsal for 2024. It was a practice run for what God is getting ready to do. Oh, the former is greater than the latter. Let me, or the, let me, let me, or the latter is greater than the former. The end of a thing is better than the beginning. Does anybody believe that? Would you stand to your feet across every location right now? And I want to lead you because we do a candlelight service at every campus. And, and I want you to get your candles ready. Before we do that, can I, can I get one? We're gonna get our candles ready. And I wanna tell you what it represents symbolically. Jesus is most likely not the person that you think he is. Much of what we think about Jesus, we've learned from tradition, religion. Much of what we've heard about Jesus is something that we've heard from bigoted, small-minded, myopic, prejudiced preachers. But I dare you tonight to take a journey for yourself to Bethlehem. I dare you to say, show me who you really are, King of glory. Show me who you really are. And what I love about the wise men who were wild is they didn't take somebody else's word for it. You know, they could have said, oh yeah, you take that journey all the way to Bethlehem and then you tell me whether or not he was the Messiah. They said, I'm gonna see it for myself. And for all of you who love science, well, I love science too. I read so much science on my journey. For those of you who love philosophy, for those of you who've studied world religions, listen, this church is for the seekers. Why? Because because the Bible says, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And instead of taking somebody else's word for it, instead of saying, well, I'll just trust what the preacher says about who Jesus is. I want to know who wants to take a journey through the year 2024 to Bethlehem with me. Who wants to take that journey with me to see who Jesus really is for themselves? Who wants to know him? You can't know him in his healing power 
deeper until you have a disease that he's going to heal. You can't know him in his provision unless you experience lack where he becomes your supply. You can't know him in peace until you experience confusion. Can I just tell you, everything happening in your life right now is a setup for you to take a journey to know him in a way that you have never known him before. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I am surrounded by you, Jesus. Somebody shout unto God. Some of you who don't know Jesus are saying, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Listen, God didn't necessarily cause it to happen, but he will take what the devil meant for your harm and turn it around for your good. So we're gonna light these candles, but before we do, I wanna ask a question. Is there anybody here who's saying, Pastor Mike, I wanna know Jesus. I wanna accept him as my savior. I wanna, I wanna know him, come on. Yeah, just lift your hand, I see hands. Praise God. There's hands all over this place, all over every campus right now. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna begin to light these candles. And why don't you light yours off of somebody else's? just as a symbol of how we share the light of Christ. Light makes a way where there seems to be no way. Light begins to illuminate the path ahead of you. Light begins to reveal. It's a source of heat as well in the midst of cold. It was the light that guided them to Bethlehem. It's the light of Jesus Christ that leads us to the Father. This is what this light represents. Across every location, is it possible to bring the lights down in the house so we can only have the candlelight? Yeah, come on. And we're going to begin to pray this together, and then we're going to sing. Everybody just repeat with me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the cross where my sins were forgiven. Jesus was born, lived a sinless life, died and on the third day, resurrected from the dead. And I thank you for washing me clean, forgiving all my sins by the blood of Jesus. I give you my life. 2024, I will journey to know who you truly are. And how I end this year is how I begin the next chapter. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed in jesus name amen amen come on let's sing across every location